all fighters strive to keep zero losses throughout their careers. Some fighters receive their first loss, learn from their mistakes, and move on. Others go on a long streak of victories and their first loss is devastating, affecting the rest of their career. The same can be said about the boxing fate of the great Mike Tyson. For every boxing fan, Iron Mike's career evokes a vivid range of memories. Victories, knockouts, scandals, and defeats. But most importantly, greatness. Since the peak of Iron Mike's career, more than one generation of heavyweight boxers has changed. But none of them have managed to outshine Tyson. Iron Mike won the lion's share of his matches in the early years of his career when he crushed opponents one after another and accumulated early victories. A bright string of victories was interrupted in February of 1990 in his 38th professional fight. It was at this point that Tyson met James Buster Douglas, who at the time was considered nothing more than a decent second-tier boxer. The same Douglas who in 1987 missed his chance to win the championship title by surrendering the fight to Tony Tucker. Few doubted that there would be another Tyson victory. Odds on the Tyson-Douglas fight were given at 45 to 1 in Tyson's favor. However, on February 11, 1990, in front of thousands of spectators who filled the Tokyo Dome and millions watching this fight live, the most sensational event in the history of boxing took place. Tyson tried to start the fight in his usual manner. Mike walked forward, trying to get to a comfortable close distance. But Douglas did not flinch under the onslaught from the champion. The challenger began to meet the opponent with hard jabs, which noticeably knocked down the aggressive fuse of Iron Mike. Gradually, Douglas himself began to go on the offensive and was no longer afraid to use combinations. When the same pattern repeated in the second and third rounds, it became clear that the fight was going to be very difficult for Tyson and that Douglas was having the best fight of his life. The beginning of each round was marked by Tyson's active actions, but at the same time, with each round, his period of activity faded faster and faster. Mike's position was becoming very difficult. In the fifth round, Tyson's battle was further complicated by an eye injury after a precise strike from Douglas. But despite the injury and the loss of points, Tyson still had a favorable chance of winning. Douglas was also noticeably tired after the midpoint of the fight, and in the eighth round, Mike seized the moment to deliver one of his signature blows, an uppercut. James Douglas fell, was able to get up but did not fully recover and was probably only saved from a knockout by the bell. During Douglas's countdown, the referee cautioned Tyson because he didn't immediately return to his corner. This delayed the referee's countdown, giving Buster additional time to recover. The action was controversial, and Tyson supporters still believe that Mike was robbed of a knockout victory as Douglas was actually on the canvas for more than 10 seconds. Whatever the case, in the break between the rounds, James recovered while Mike seemed to be even more frustrated. The end of the fight came in the 10th round. Toward the middle of the round, Douglas began to throw a light jab. Tyson did not react in any way and simply took the attacks on himself. After baiting Mike with the front hand, Douglas unexpectedly landed a powerful right uppercut that shocked the champion. Then, Douglas threw a series of punches that sent Tyson to the canvas. Tyson tried to rise, but first, he wasn't able to do it in 10 seconds. And second, once on his feet, Tyson was unstable. Thus, Douglas won by a brutal knockout, which is still called one of the biggest sensations in the history of boxing.
This defeat was the result of Tyson's frivolous attitude to his training and sports regimen, his constant partying and unhealthy lifestyle, and most importantly, boundless confidence in his invincibility. Adding insult to injury, Buster Douglas lost the title of absolute world champion and all of his titles in his next fight to Evander Holyfield in October of 1990. As for Tyson, the fight in Tokyo divided his career into before and after. The aura of a boxer who cannot be beaten was irretrievably lost. After the Buster Douglas failure, Tyson managed to hold four more fights, winning all four of them. While preparing for his next fight with Evander Holyfield, Mike became embroiled in a famous scandal that led to a rape charge and a prison term. After his release from prison, Iron Mike won four more victories in a row and again became the WBC and WBA world champion. Finally, for the third time in six years, the fight between Mike Tyson and Evander Holyfield was officially announced. All tickets for the fight at the MGM Grand were sold out in a matter of hours. At the time, the Tyson-Holyfield fight became the highest grossing fight in boxing history. No one believed in Holyfield's success. Bookmakers took bets at the rate of 25 to 1. Many were sure that Mike would sweep Holyfield out of the ring in the first rounds. The fight took place on November 9, 1996. Tyson immediately rushed at the opponent with a hail of blows. But Holyfield not only skillfully defended himself, but also successfully attacked in response. In the third round, the fight turned into a real meat grinder. In fights such as these, endurance and physical preparation determine the outcome. Not to say that Tyson had problems with this, but it seems that even he did not expect Evander to be so strong mentally and be able to maintain the pace that Tyson set from the first round. Plus, Holyfield skillfully worked with Tyson in the clinches, exhausting him. Evander was not inferior in physical strength and on the contrary, seemed to be leading the fight. In the fifth round, Mike fell into his usual routine, close combat, throwing out powerful uppercuts and short left hooks, which on the surface, Holyfield easily coped with. At this moment, the turning point came. It seemed that Tyson psychologically broke down. He had relied on aggression over and over again, but this time, his opponent withstood the onslaught and returned powerful blows. Mike did not know how to defeat such an opponent. Quieter as a result. In the Holyfield corner, they detected a little nip on the side of his mouth, but they said nothing. After four rounds, they got the score on cards on that single foul. Now, both wailing away. What an exchange. A chance of Holyfield. In the sixth round, Holyfield knocked Tyson down with a left hook to the chest due to Mike losing his balance, but the judge counted it as a knockdown. After the round, it turned out that Tyson received a cut over his left eye due to a headbutt from Holyfield. And that's, equivalent of and, six and, rounds. And here is where corners save you or lose you. Again, after the end of the fourth round, they go to the scorecards in terms of an accidental foul. In the seventh round, there was again a hard clash of heads, from which Tyson screamed in pain and his legs gave way. The referee counted this headbutt from Holyfield as unintentional. Mike did not give up and looked for a chance to attack. Got him ahead by three. And, and. 
At the end of the 10th round, Holyfield dealt a terrible blow. Instead of saving himself in the clinch, Mike tried to get revenge and ran into a repeated counterattack. This time, the rope saved him from falling. Evander simply just did not have enough time left in the round to finish Tyson off. But it was obvious that the fate of the battle was decided. 35 seconds into the 11th round, the referee stood between the boxers, signaling the victory of Evander Holyfield, who repeated Muhammad Ali's record of becoming a three-time world champion. The boxing world recognized their new heavyweight king. A little more than six months later, the rematch between Mike Tyson and Evander Holyfield took place and became one of the most scandalous fights in boxing history. Despite the result of the first fight, Tyson again approached the rematch as a favorite. The fight was called The Sound and the Fury and received even more attention than the previous one and was the most expensive fight at the time. Tyson's team claimed that Mike was in excellent physical shape, but the question remained, was his mental side as strong? Tyson actively started the fight and used his famous bob and weave, which was lacking in the last fight. The first round was relatively even. However, Holyfield won the ending. At the beginning of the second round, Evander headbutted Tyson, causing a cut. Tyson writhed in pain and turned to the referee, who did not react. Around the right eye of Mike Tyson from a clash of heads, I believe. That's just what happened, and Mike said, what about this fight, what about this head? Look at the blood streaking down from the, the outer portions of the right eye of Tyson. As soon as Iron Mike tried to attack, Holyfield counterattacked with lightning speed or tied his opponent's hands and did not allow the attack to develop. The third round began with a furious attack from Tyson and several solid punches hit the target. Mike had the advantage for the whole round, rarely missing a beat and delivering more and more hits. 40 seconds before the end of the round, Tyson attacked, but Holyfield began to clinch again and Mike later claimed that once again, Holyfield headbutted him. In response, Tyson bit Holyfield on the right ear, biting off and spitting out a piece of his ear on the floor of the ring. Holyfield, of course, was shocked by such an act and wanted to punish Mike for it. The doctor examined Holyfield and said he could continue the fight, and the referee penalized Tyson by two points. The fight resumed. And 20 seconds before the end of the round, Holyfield again headbutted Tyson. Mike again bit his opponent, this time on his left ear. Holyfield started to jump, but the fight was not stopped. Tyson took the end of the third round, but the fighters did not reach the fourth round. There was a sudden commotion as people ran into the ring and a brawl began. Security and police were involved to stop the brawl. Tyson was disqualified, stripped of his boxing license, and fined $3 million. There it is. In late 1998, the Boxing Commission voted to restore Tyson's boxing license. In January of 1999, Iron Mike celebrated his first victory over Francois Botha. But Tyson was not destined to become a champion again. Having won several victories from 99 through 2001, Mike became the number one contender for the fight against the dominant British champion of the time, Lennox Lewis. Back in 1995, Lewis, nicknamed Lion, took the IBF world title from Tommy Morrison, and since that time had begun to collect the belts from the other organizations. He defeated Evander Holyfield, David Tua, and other famous boxers. But in April of 2001, Lewis stumbled and, unexpectedly for everyone, lost all his titles to Hasim Rahman, who knocked out the champion with a heavy right cross and then created the upset of the year. In the rematch, Lennox knocked out Rahman and regained all of his belts. Now, he had to defend his titles from a boxer whom some considered one of the most dangerous heavyweights on the planet. The fight took place in June 2002 at the Pyramid Arena in Memphis, Tennessee. In the first round, Tyson dominated and worked in his usual aggressive manner. However, Lewis chose the right tactics to counter Mike. He worked on leading blows, and if Tyson came close, he constantly tied him in a clinch. Yeah, 
Starting from the second round, Lewis began to look more convincing and landed more blows. He seemed to be able to easily read Tyson's actions and was so confident that at times he lowered his hands, demonstrating his invulnerability. Tyson, on the other hand, never adapted his tactics, continuing to work in the same patterns, and something had to change. Mike lacked combinations to the body, and he only hunted for the head. At the end of the fourth round, Lewis hooked Mike and hung on him. Tyson fell. But the judge did not see a knockdown, but rather deducted a point from Lennox for hanging on Tyson and forcing him to fall to the ground. In the fifth round, it was clear that Tyson was tired, and Lewis, on the contrary, felt like the owner of the ring. The Briton dominantly took the fifth, sixth, and seventh rounds. Lewis was great at striking from a distance. Tyson's activity decreased with each round, and the British Lion was gaining momentum. Tyson made attempts and could still hit, but he tactically was losing the battle. In the middle of the eighth round, Lewis hit Tyson in the jaw with a left uppercut. Mike squatted down and the referee counted the knockdown. Toward the end of the round, Lewis knocked Tyson to the canvas with a right cross. At the count of 10, Mike just knelt. The referee scored a knockout. Lennox Lewis kept his belts, went on to make one more defense against Vitaly Klitschko, and hung up his gloves. Mike Tyson had lost this last opportunity to regain the championship. The next time Iron Mike entered the ring eight months later, his victory over secondary rival Clifford Etienne was the last win in his professional career. In July 2004, after a 17-month break, Tyson had another comeback fight against British boxer Danny Williams. Williams, nicknamed Brixton Bomber, had a good record of 31-3, with 26 early victories. Tyson dominated the first two rounds. He had worked with the talented trainer, Freddie Roach, to restore his old Iron Mike technique. In this fight, we saw Tyson's signature body and head combinations, which were so lacking in his fight with Lennox Lewis. In the middle of the first round, Williams managed to stay on his feet, even after missing incoming uppercuts. In the second round, Danny Williams began to respond more to Tyson's attacks. The third round was even, with Williams landing several clean shots as well as several illegal shots for which he was penalized. with the left. 
There's a right hand by Williams. Pushes Tyson back. At the beginning of the fourth round, Tyson shocked the Briton again, but he was able to recover. Williams knows it, and he throws combinations. Commander Holyfield and Lennox Lewis, and he's having his way. Firing shots. Tyson in some difficulty. Here in round four. Big right hand. And at the end of the round, Tyson was unexpectedly knocked out. After the fight, it turned out that Tyson tried to fight on one leg, tearing a ligament on the other knee in the first round. This defeat was the fifth in the career of Iron Mike, and the Brixton Bomber is still an active boxer and holds a record of 55 and 32. Many fans understood Tyson's defeat to the dominant champion Lennox Lewis and justified Mike's loss, but many could not accept the loss from Danny Williams. Critics already believed it was time for Tyson to hang up his gloves. But a year later, on June 11, 2005, Mike Tyson again entered the ring against the little-known Irish boxer, Kevin McBride. He was an Irish heavyweight champion and had a record of 32-4-1. At a conference before the fight, Tyson said that he would gut the Irishman like a fish. McBride, for his part, vowed to shock the world with a victory over Tyson. After the pre-fight weigh-in, McBride was 37 pounds heavier than his opponent. Throughout the fight, McBride actively used his advantage in height and reach, trying to keep Tyson at a distance with a jab, leaning in and clinching as he tried to get close. However, Iron Mike was more active and won the first three rounds. In the fourth, he consolidated his advantage with several successful attacks on the opponent's head and body, but Mike could not build on his success, as McBride defended well. Tyson lacked sharpness and aggression in his actions and by the fifth round, he was tired. McBride's game plan was to tire his opponent, which worked out well in his favor. At the end of the fifth round, Tyson missed several tight uppercuts from the clinch, and the round went in McBride's favor. Tyson started the sixth round actively, but then he earned two penalty points for an illegal move and a headbutt. At the end of the round, McBride fell on Tyson, and Tyson fell to the ropes, but the referee did not consider it a knockdown. Mike looked exhausted, got up with difficulty, and slowly walked to his corner. At the end of six rounds, Tyson was in the lead on the card of the two judges, but he unexpectedly refused to continue the fight, and McBride was awarded the technical knockout victory, which brought him world fame. After the fight, Iron Mike announced his retirement. Mike, first let's start with you. Did you want to continue? Well, I would like to continue, but I saw that I was getting beat on. I realized I don't think I have it anymore because um, I got the ability to stay in shape, but I don't got the fighting guts, I don't think, anymore. When did you recognize that? At what part of the fight? I don't know. Early into the fight. Um, I'm just sorry I let everybody down. I, mean, I just don't have this in my heart anymore. Does that mean we won't see you fight again? Yeah, most likely I'm not going to fight again. I'm not going to disrespect the sport anymore by losing to this caliber of fighters. Thus ended the bright era of one of the greatest heavyweight boxers in world history. At the 49th annual WBC convention in Las Vegas, Mike Tyson was entered into the Guinness Book of Records for the fastest knockouts and for becoming the youngest world heavyweight champion. And despite all the defeats, Mike Tyson remains a true boxing legend. 
If you enjoyed this video, please click the like, leave us a comment, and hit the bell to turn on notifications so you won't miss our next videos. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing so right now. See you next time in the ring.